need your key alert. I got the keys, keys, keys. 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 Hey guys. Welcome to today's episode of Lottie's Locks. Didn't make a show yesterday because I didn't have any locks. If you want to do this for a living, it's important to not force it. Don't feel like you need to make a play every day. Let's get started with my locks. First lock, Detroit Pistons minus two on the road in Orlando. Veterans versus youngins. The Pistons are due for the win, due for a win. After starting the season 4-0, they lost five straight. But let's take a look at their opponents in those first four games. The Nets at home. The Bulls, they barely escaped with a victory at home against the Sixers, and then the Cavs. Next five opponents, Celtics twice, Nets on the road, Sixers on the road, then a loss against the Heat at home. A lot easier to understand why a team would start off 4-0 and than lose five straight. It's all about who you're playing and where you're playing. You also notice the Pistons play pretty good on the road, just one win, but two of those three losses came by a single possession. Now they are coming off a tough loss against Miami where they stormed back in the fourth quarter. They were down by seven going into the fourth quarter. I think they went down by as many as 11 or 13 before they went on a huge run to tie the game up, send it into overtime. They did lose in overtime, but that's how basketball works. It's a game of runs. The Pistons ran out of ammo at the end, and Blake Griffin fouling out late in the fourth quarter didn't help. So you know they're raging coming into this game. That's why taking them to win the first quarter wouldn't be a bad idea either, although the Magic, since losing the first quarter 22-10 to in their second game of the season, they've won the first quarter in five of their next eight games, losing two and tying the other. But those teams they were playing weren't coming into this game as hungry as the Detroit Pistons are. The Orlando Magic are young and still not very good. And young and not very good teams are allergic to prosperity. Even in their last win against the worst team in the NBA, they're up 11 at half. Then they lose the fourth quarter by 20 points to go down nine into the fourth quarter. They were just lucky they were playing against another young, bad team. That is not the Detroit Pistons. They have veterans. They have playoff aspirations coming into this season. I'm sure they had conversations about winning the East. They realized how important this game is for them. Lock number one, Detroit Pistons minus two in Orlando. Lock number two. Memphis Grizzlies plus three and a half at home against the Denver Nuggets. I don't have a lot of numbers for you guys with this pick. This is just a gut feeling. Do you really think the Nuggets are as good as nine and one? Let's take a look at their season. Impressive, no question. Huge wins against the Warriors, the Jazz, and the Celtics. But all these wins came in Denver. Even this win against the Pelicans, who were without Anthony Davis, came in Denver. And they only won that game by five points. To me, this is more like a 7-3 and three team at this point in the season based on the way they've played. They're 9-1 and one because they've been playing their tough opponents at home. The Grindhouse, baby. The Grizzlies are undefeated at the Grindhouse in Memphis. The game is sold out. Memphis has one of the best fan bases in the NBA. The fans are well aware they're hosting the team with the best record in the NBA. So they're going to be going wild. The Nuggets are due for a loss. Plus, they don't even have to lose for you to win. They just can't win by more than three. Second lock, Memphis Grizzlies, plus three and a half at home. Lock number three, New Orleans Pelicans, minus ten and a half at home. Pelicans have had a tough schedule lately. Same situation as the Pistons. Won their first four games, lost the next five. Not going to go through all their games, but same idea. Three of their first four at home. Their next five opponents were some of the best in the league, and they're missing Anthony Davis for a few of those games. I don't think any of us doubt the Pelicans will win this game, but will it be a blowout? The Pelicans were one of the last eight remaining teams in the NBA last season. They believe they have the best player in the league. Started the season on fire at 4-0. Now you've lost five straight. Can't use the excuse of not having Davis because he wasn't there, or he was there, sorry, for the past two games. Let's look at Davis' performances in those games. Not the greatest. He did fill it up a bit against the Spurs, but just 17 points. Not shooting the ball very well. Davis is ready to explode. And he's got just the opponent to do it. The Bulls needed two overtimes to beat the Knicks without their leading scorer, Tim Hardaway Jr. And usually during a road trip, if the team doesn't have a game the next day, they'll stay that night in the city that they played in, get a good night's sleep, then travel to the next city they're playing in the next day. Not always, because teams are smart. What would you do after getting a win against the New York Knicks in New York if you were an NBA player? You'd probably go out. Monday night doesn't mean a thing in New York City. There's always something going on. And teams know that, which is why some organizations avoid nights spent in cities such as New York, L.A., and of course, the best of them all, Toronto. 
So they probably spent the night out in New York. They also haven't been very good after wins. See here, then blown out, win, then blown out. Without a doubt, the Bulls coaching staff will be emphasizing to their players to not let that happen this time. It's just they're going up against a powerhouse, a really good ball team, hungry for a win. The Bulls won't be blown out after every game they win this season, but this isn't the game they figure it out. Lock number three, New Orleans Pelicans, minus 10.5 at home against the Chicago Bulls. Last lock, under 237 points, Los Angeles Lakers versus Minnesota Timberwolves. Now these two teams just played last week and they combined for 244 points. Both are top 10 in the NBA in possessions per game, so they like to play at a fast pace. But the Lake Show is slowing down. Since that game against the T-Wolves where they put up 104 shots, the Lakers haven't put up more than 86 in their next three games. And they won two of those three games. They played a fast pace against the Wolves last week, and despite putting up six more shots than the T-Wolves did in that game, they still lost. So it's a safe assumption that they'll continue playing at a slower pace. Butler needs to be playing in this game for this game to go under. When, he's play when he doesn't play, the Wolves play at a ridiculous place. They play at a ridiculous pace. They play slower with him in the lineup, so if Butler is playing, the final lock today is under 237 points. Los Angeles Lakers versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And that's all the locks for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good luck if you're placing any bets tonight. And be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Major key alert! I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys.